is your time to shine. Yeah. You're allowed. Yes. Let's talk about Ghosts of Tsushima. You've been waiting for this. Yes. Moment. Let's talk about the game that you can't stop talking about. I I don't think I'll be able to stop talking about this one for a while. This is this is my Devil May Cry five of this year, where I, it deserves all the awards <laughs> and should be provided them. I mean, I haven't beaten the game yet, so I might end up hating it. Highly doubtful, though, uh, because us, right now. A little bra background before we get into it. Yeah, what like, is Ghost, about, about the for game? Those that may not know. So There's think of here. every cool aspect about samurais and you know like 1800 japan era and just imagine all that cool stuff was put in a game and you got to be the samurai that's ghost tsushima it is so sweet but i think the best thing about the game and usually this for me is like dead last in the things that i genuinely care about not that it isn't an important thing but just on the list of this is what needs to be good with a game before I like it. It's the last thing is the graphics. And the thing about this game is it looks so damn good that even like the bad stuff is so easily forgivable because of how good it looks. I'm telling you every corner I turn around, I'm like, hold on. I need to, I, I need to go into photo mode now. I need to take a photo. Uh, we're going to add some depth of field. In there. It's just, it is such a beautiful, before. yeah, it is such a beautiful game and it just like oozes style and it's almost to the point where, like, the world itself is a character. Um, and it's, like, it's not realistic. You know, like, there are leaves falling all the time. And that's just that's just <laughs> not how it is in real life. But I don't care. Like, I could ride <laughs> through the world of this game forever. Like, uh, it is just so good. I got a question for you, too. Uh -huh. Something I've seen about this. The main character's name is Jin, correct? Yes, Jin um, Sakai. I've, I've heard some people saying that the main character just doesn't have a lot of pull or like uh, character depth uh, to him. Now, is that, yeah. is that just because it's not the standard, you know, protagonist that uh, the North American audience expects like a Nathan Drake, that's um, super, super bold. And and, uh, um, yeah. I feel like, you know, with, with this game, he's a little more, you know, uh, respectful, stoic kind of approach. It, do you think that's why, or do you feel like maybe that's something they could have, up a bit and a little more depth to the main character. So yeah, so so I'm not super far into the game, um, but I can definitely see where some people are getting that perspective in that the character is not necessarily lifeless. Like he isn't completely one dimensional. They set up a decent amount about Jin and his story and kind of what he's going through. Um, and there are certain things that you can do in the game. Like there's this thing called the hot springs where you essentially like you go into like almost like a hot tub and you just reflect on your life and you can get kind of little bits and pieces about the character through that um but yeah it's definitely i can see where people are coming from where he's a little more stoic he's he's a little quieter he's not your nathan drake uh mm -hmm. like quick-witted character um but i i don't know i th there's something that i like about the way that that character is portrayed i don't know if it's just the way that that's almost the way the culture is mm -hmm. for the samurais and everything and and the way that they are these just these warship warriors and mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, so I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Again, I got a lot more of the game to play. Uh, yeah. I, I don't even know if I've scratched the surface and I've put in. A I don't think you me. have. I don't yeah. think you have. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> because like dream. half my time is in photo mode, but yeah. also because just like there's so much to explore and so much to see in this game. Um, so so we'll see if I end up hating it. I, I just I just don't see myself not liking this game based on everything that I've played because I'm serious in that every minute I've played this game so far, I have like loved, not just yeah. liked, not just enjoyed. No, I have loved every minute of the game so far. And I'm expecting that I'll feel the same way by the end of it. And right now it's uh it's gearing up to be my game of the year candidate. Which is crazy. Like, um, and Stealth Gamer in chat also agrees with you. This is probably going to be my second favorite PS4 game of all time. And it's, mm. the game is stunning. When you lay your eyes on the game, especially if you're a fan of, like, Japan and, like, samurai <laughs> movies. No, I'm... I'm serious. No, I, I love watching <laughs> samurai movies with my dad. And, like, when I saw Ghost back in... 2018 at E3, yep. um, I had a chance to talk to the devs about the game and they showed us behind closed doors and it was just that first scene and it looked beautiful. Their whole 
concept of this game is mud and blood. Like that, that is their concept for the game. And, and pretty flowers. Around. And pretty and flowers colors. and birds and oh foxes. And it just looks so beautiful. Like Drew Base, hey Drew, in chat is saying it's samurai movie porn. And it is that. It is that. <laughs> if you are a fan of mode. samurais, it it looks amazing. Um, there is my- straight up a Kurosawa mode where you can make it black and white. Yes. And it's like straight up like 1960s film um, filter. And it, oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. I don't I don't play the whole game that way because I like to look at the colors and, and all the prettiness of the game. But I know when I'm done and I beat the game, I'll do a second playthrough with that. Okay. Thing so, is, sorry. Bro- sorry, Brody, you, you mentioned it. I find it interesting that you mentioned about the character of Jin because this was my only hesitation to going into Ghost. And I had this hesitation when I talked to the, the devs in 2018 about them being a North American studio yeah. mm-hmm. and their perspective right. of samurais and japan and that time and how they're focusing on making it authentic they spent a lot of time in japan they've done a lot of historical research because they know the sensitivity around creating a game like this especially when they're a north american studio and especially because it is a playstation exclusive a company that is the biggest one of the biggest video game Japanese companies. So they actually worked a lot with the executives to make sure that they were getting the right permission to put um, certain things in the game. So I find that very respectful, but I do understand why people may have hesitations about that. So my biggest hesitation, so obviously we had um, two, uh, basically a game set in the same. We had obviously Sekiro and Mm -hmm. uh, now this. Um, that were teased a few years ago. That's when we first saw them. Um, the one thing that held me back from Sekiro is the just the I'm not a Souls guy. Like I just don't necessarily like that. Yeah. So um, the the thing though is like I, whereas the um, Ghost does look a lot smoother. The it, the thing I'm starting to run out is uh, or question though is are we going to get burnt out from this style of game? Because I feel yeah. like almost every single PlayStation game is starting to play the same uh uncharted spider-man's that third person over the shoulder the flow a lot of times feels very similar and it's good because like they're fun they're smooth they're they flow well and they're they're fun to control but it seems yeah. like every game is just now following this formula is that good for like the control and movement is that good or is it bad are we going to get burnt out um because like a lot of the games are starting to just look like the same thing mm-hmm. reskin to me mm-hmm. and that's my biggest holdback on ghost right now is it the gameplay just looked like something f- so familiar, something I've played before. I, I feel like if you see a style of the game that works and you just try to innovate from there, you can mm-hmm. make a good, like, you know, there was, there was a wave of this with first person shooters when, when Halo was its thing and Call yeah. of Duty started getting to its prime. Everyone was like, yeah, we're going to make first person shooters as well. You had your battlefields and, you know, like Titanfall in there, but the, but then you look at a, 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 a situation like Titanfall, where they take the genre of first-person shooters, they take all the things that you know and you'll be familiar with from a first-person mm-hmm. shooter, but then they add in giant robots that you call into the fight, and like they innovate, right? And I feel like that's what you're getting right now in this wave of third-person mm-hmm. games, third-person action adventures with your Uncharted's or The Last of Us, Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima. They all kind of like conceptually look the same yeah but they all have just that sprinkle of uniqueness where they all feel different play different work different and especially in in the case of ghost um i initially was going into it not knowing what the combat was like and then first glance i was like oh god this is souls like isn't it (laughs) and i was like i'm i'm gonna hate it and then I started to learn like the way you got to utilize different stances and how this stance is good for this enemy type or that stance is good for that enemy type and how you got to integrate your bow or, you know, like you get these ghost weapons where you can get like a smoke bomb or something like that. Like, and just throwing all that in there, it definitely doesn't feel Souls-like once I figured everything out. Um, it's still overwhelming when you have like five dudes to take down. <laughs> it gets it gets intense and you're yeah. going to get knocked on your ass a lot. Um, but once you really start to get the hang of it and you're utilizing like everything in the control scheme with all the different combat elements, uh, it really starts to gel well. And it definitely doesn't feel souls like at that point, like it doesn't feel like one hit and you're dead. 
So I enjoy that. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I get I get what you're saying and I get your fear. But I feel like if you take a concept and you can make something that's even slightly unique from something else that may have a similar concept, then we can uh, we can get a we can get a good batch of good games. I'm just I'm just I, wondering. Sorry, it's just like it, it feels like that whole FPS thing where it just like FPS felt stale for a while. And I'm wondering if we're going to start hitting right. that with third person single player games where it starts to feel stale. Story can only push it so far. This one tiny new mechanic can only push it so far. Um, and what's going to be that game to break it? Like, you know, I think recently we've seen a couple games start to bring FPS back. Doom Eternal was the funnest I've had in an FPS mm -hmm. in like a decade. It is yeah. amazing um, and so fun. What I'm wondering if we're going to see a game like that um, pop out now in this whole third person single player um, genre of games as well. Because again, I do feel like it's we're hitting that kind of like, okay, we figured it out. The we're plateau. all doing this. Yeah, yeah where, well, you know, what jumps from here? I feel like it's okay if something's working because, yes, we're thinking of, um, you know, those tri those games looking all the same to us, people who play games for a living, and we're playing a lot of games, so it does get tiring for us. But when you're looking at a AAA game and when they're selling that game to launch or, like, with a console bundle um, or they're putting that game to launch a console – it has to be approachable. So if that equation works, because it is mm -hmm. very easy to understand for someone who may not be, claim being, be playing games as much as we are, um, I, I think stick with it. That's why it's important, though, for these big studios or big companies to also invest in indie titles um, that sometimes show us a diverse perspective and that that's the thing i think pc gamers do expose themselves more to different types of games because yeah. there's more out there um mm -hmm. and that's something that you know we saw with xbox xbox is buying all these small studios and that's what they're trying to do we just need more um like uh, the big guns consoles to actually do that as well i saw drew face he wrote i just think action adventure games have finally oh this comment went up has finally hit uh, like a pinnacle of themselves so there's a new standard that is overall good for the masses but at the cost of saturation and I, I, you know, I think we're all agreeing on that it's just yeah. how you diversify that um either with indie titles or with studio investing in different types of action adventure games if it's that genre i love uh, that you, yeah sorry i love that you mentioned uh pc gamers uh diversify and play a lot of different types of games uh have you met league of legends players say that all you were playing was rocket league you know what we, we'll just leave it at people that play games with the name league in it there and that oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, yeah, competitive point. is such a different thing i was that's why i'm curious like we're talking about all these these single player like have like what's your uh because like and there's no fault because league of legends it like you've got to put a lot of time into that what like do you get a lot of time to put into like these these uh single player third person uh type games uh, well, it definitely depends on like how badly I want to grind for the yeah. week, you know, because sometimes yeah. um, I, I think maybe you do you play You probably play ranked on Rocket League, right? Yep. Most yeah, of my time is so, into it, too. That's that's what I'm saying. I find it hard to, to get. Yeah, into these yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly what happens is like we get um, our time kind of sinks into that and sinks mm -hmm. into, oh, well, this game wasn't my fault at all. So I'm going to play another one and hopefully it's going to be better. <laughs> and then you just get stuck in that for like hours and hours. Um but I think like, well, I personally like, like love this genre of video game. It's like that third person and it's like open world and it's like very uh, beautiful. Adventure, um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's what's so great about these titles now. Like, like God of War 3 is like another one that was like that. God of War 3 and, and, or the newest, the PlayStation 4 one? Oh, sorry. Yeah. The newest one. The newest God one. God of War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the, the newest uh, God of War title. Like I, I actually yeah. started playing that recently. And I, I think I feel the same way as you did, Caboose, when you were um, firing a ghost because you said it was like just so pretty. And like a lot of my time was spent just like walking around, looking at all the yeah. details, looking for treasure. And I think that's what makes these games so great, even if they are kind of repetitive, because it's like it's the best way to kind of immerse yourself in a world. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like with first person 
uh, perspectives, it's a lot harder to kind of look around and like really, really take everything is because it might be like too overwhelming. Whereas yeah. when you have like the third person, you can really see everything. You really interact with the world like properly. So in my opinion, I don't think that's going to get too repetitive too soon. Obviously, as long as we don't have like another samurai game on top of another <laughs> samurai game and another samurai game. Um, Listen, I'll take I'll take a Ghost of Tsushima too. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't care. I'll take ten games from Sucker Punch. In he that hasn't world. even got fifteen yeah. percent of yeah. the game. Yeah. Yet. he's asking for I, this I like one. five minutes. I love, <laughs> um, I, the best way to explain it is if you if you guys ever watch, I mean, we all watch our E threes, right? And we know that every E three demo plays out the same, and it plays out in a way that nobody who actually plays the game will ever do it. Yeah. Where they do this thing, where they do this thing, where like they turn a corner. And they slowly pan the camera up, and you see the whole open world. They're slowly walking forward. The thing to is, to be fair, I do uh, that in Last of Us. I'm not gonna lie. Right. So that's, that's the <laughs> point so that pretty. I was gonna make. That's the point that I was gonna make is when I play Ghost of Tsushima, I e3 demo it every yeah. second <laughs> of the game. I'm always like, okay, hold on. We need to have like a slow rise up of the camera, pan yes. up, see this beautiful yeah. sunset. You know, like I, I just do it constantly because yeah. there are so many scenarios that provide that for me. And it, I don't know. The game is just frigging beautiful. And um, it's I, I recommend it to everybody. Th there was one other. Sorry, I think that has to do with the fact that like when you're playing those third person games like i did that with breath of the wild like all the time but you're playing it for that story or the love of the characters so i think what alex is saying like it doesn't really get old that gameplay because they offer small unique features in it and also the great either great writing of the story the characters or the immersion of the environment right mm -hmm. so uh, I, and i'm wondering if this is maybe just a um a thought process of someone that tends more towards competitive gaming. Cause uh, even Alex mentioned, like I started God of War. Did you finish it though? No, not yet. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, I actually find it very difficult to find, to finish single player games um, because right. I end up jumping straight back to my competitive game. I don't, I don't know right. if you have this issue as well with MK as well. Um, but I know Camille, when she sits to a game, she finishes that single player game. Like she'll crush through it. But I, so I'm wondering if this is more of a, a, a comp like, people that play competitive games, a mentality with them where it's like, and this is why that's, I worry about that saturation because for me, it's like, I need something to really keep me invested. Otherwise I'm just going to jump right back to my competitive game. I mean, for me, like, uh, you know, I definitely always try to spare time to play more Mortal Kombat and to, and to just keep progressing with that game because it's one of those games where, you know, yeah, there's a story and all that, but it's, you just keep coming back to play against people online, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely leave room to keep playing games like that. And honestly, for a good stretch, that was kind of the only game that I played. Uh, it was either that or like maybe I'd be playing Warzone or Destiny 2. Um, and I'd mainly want to stick to just playing those things competitively, jumping online, trying to like rank up, whatever it is. Or in the case of like Warzone, you want to just rack up as many wins as you can. Yeah. Um, so I, I found myself in that cycle a couple of times, but I feel like just recently uh, with, with, with um, Last of Us Part Two and then now Ghost of Tsushima, I'm like, man, I must have, I must have missed out on some stuff because I was really late to the party with God of War. Um, Spider-Man, obviously I played right away, covered it, yeah. had to. Um, Red Dead 2, was another one where I just like I couldn't put my controller down and stop playing those games or that game. So there have been there have been a couple of single player games that really grab a hold of me and make me want to just say, okay, forget Mortal Kombat for a second. Like I need yeah. to play this. Um, but I do find myself in some scenarios like yourself, Brody, where you know in, in your instance you maybe go back to something like Rocket League, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and just drop a single player game that you may be playing. And and I yeah I found myself in that scenario before. A Jahavi in chat says, I feel like most older console consoles have similar style games that evolve over time. N64 had collectathons, for example, but I haven't played much consoles since GameCube. And I think it is like kind of like a cycle, right? So maybe when we hit that point when we're tired of games that are in the action adventure games that are in this style, we'll see something mm -hmm. different. But we'll mm -hmm. just have to wait till then. Yeah. Yeah. That, the it's, it's the right now. It's Single player uh, campaign, third person uh, shooter <laughs> is, the, is the zombies of this this generation. Yeah, 
Yep, sign up everyone. <laughs> and there was great. literally all of that in, in a zombie <laughs> game with yeah. Days Gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, well, that game was a disaster. I, oh I can't my believe people convinced themselves that that's a good game because it was. It, yo, it was not, not horrible. It was just not PlayStation great. <laughs>